Well, it's season three, and Merle got a great deal renting a seaside mansion named Dragon House. I wonder why it was such a good deal. My name is Dylan Shook and I am the information collector. Today I'm coming to you from Hendersonville, North Carolina, sharing some of the downtown sites. As things reopen, Hendersonville is the place to come for a road trip. I've started here in front of Moe's Original Barbecue. I've had their barbecue several times and the impressive thing about Moe's is one day I went into the uh, courthouse, old courthouse, which is a museum also, amazing museum. And when I came out, parked right over here in front of Moe's, they were closed because they'd run out of barbecue. When you have a restaurant that serves barbecue and they run out of barbecue, that means two things. One, they're really good. And two, it's fresh barbecue. Last Thursday, NASA issued a press release regarding the results of a study concerning the relationship between sustainable jet fuel and the formation of contrails. Um, sustainable jet fuel generates less soot, resulting in fewer ice crystals and fewer contrails. Uh, this has two primary uh, areas of impact. One, climate. According to the study, contrails, quote, alter Earth's radiation budget, end quote. Uh, it has a practical side effect also because it studies alternate jet fuels and studies incomplete combustion in jet, in, in jet engines. Um, the um, study was done with the German Aerospace Center using a NASA DC-8 and a German A320 which created contrails and probed them using spectromitic probes. Um, the tests were conducted at 10,000 feet, the airplanes flew about 500 miles per hour, and they pumped about 250 gallons an hour through the engines. The um, studies hope to, advance, uh, uh, hope to look at the advances in lean burning engines and the development of sustainable bio-based fuels. It's very interesting. The um, fuels they tested were half battle fuel, and they discovered they reduced contrail formation by over half. The uh, CO2 was actually measured by hitting air with a laser, and they measured the blink time in the laser, and that determined how much CO2 was there. Um, it compared the chemical content of the jet fuels, naphthalene, the hydrogen carbon ratio, and the sulfur. They used uh, jet fuel produced from the Fischer Tropes method involving combining mon carbon monoxide and hydrogen along with hydro processed esters and fatty acids from cooking oil, carmelina, and jetropha plants. Last Thursday, Walmart announced an investment in Drone Up, a on-demand drone delivery provider. Now they have previously worked with Drone Up in delivering at-home COVID self-collection kits. Um, plus, they've conducted hundreds of drone deliveries from Walmart stores. The company Drone Up has a database of thousands of drone pilots. The Drone Up press release 
uh, pointed out that this partnership will increase funding, will uh, help them partner with other organizations. I mean, they're with Walmart, so now they get with the best of the best in technology and training and R&D. And it said, quote, succeed in the next chapter of last mile delivery, end quote. And that's very interesting because another organization to use the term last mile delivery is the U.S. Postal Service because they go to the mailbox. So this is an interesting trend to watch, not only for Walmart and retail, but other areas of last mile delivery. Many years ago, I read a remarkable book, Nine Nations by Joel Garreau. And in it, Mr. Garreau argued that you could divide the United States into nine regions. And he wrote a very uh, lighthearted yet insightful look at the different regions, including Alaska. And in, the, for, in his chapter on Alaska, he said, it is interesting to see who lives where tomatoes won't. Now that's a bit of a hyperbole, but in a press release last Monday, Samaritan's Purse made the point that when they send volunteers to build in Alaska, they face certain challenges. Um, this press release focused on volunteers building student housing in Soldotna, Alaska. And one of the volunteers said, there's no roads, there's no utilities, it, they're isolated, there's no way out. And uh, this is why it's so significant that for 15 years, Samaritan's Purse has completed 30 projects in Alaska. This is hard work. The particular climate requires specialized building techniques and materials. And uh, they really, really help a lot of people. And I'm standing in front of the Four Seasons Garden Decor and More, which is one of many amazing shops in downtown Hendersonville, which bring you holidays all year round. Last Thursday, the EPA announced new air monitoring requirements for the Lime Tree Bay refinery in St. Croix, U.S. Virgin Islands. This is a 650,000 barrel a day refinery with a 34 million barrel storage capacity with providing 600 full-time jobs for the community. Um, it's a 1,500 acre site, which originally was owned by Hess and the Venezuela State Oil Refining Company uh, Corporation. Um, they closed it in 2012 and um, it was reopened in 2016. Um, 2016 to 2018 by another company and began operations in September 2020. Um, the EPA cited Lime Tree Bay for excessive sulfur dioxide and hydrogen sulfide emissions. Uh, and they ordered it on May 14th to stop all operations. Um, in a May 17th email, Lime Tree announced it had idled its refinery a day earlier than the instructed May 13th. Um, while continuing operations of the terminal, the power plant, which consists of five gas turbines, and the wastewater plant. Um, the electric power plant and the wastewater treatment plant provide services for a local community. Um, 
in their email, Lime Tree argued the um, EPA had no legal justification for their order because the legal precedent, they argued, says that uh, the EPA can only shut them down in, quote, in the event of an imminent and substantial endangerment, end quote. And uh, they suggested that the odors over St. Croix were due to landfill fires in the May 5 through 7 time frame. Um, they also suggested that the multi-million dollar uh, additional controls the EPA wanted could take years to install. The Clinton administration EPA actually issued exemptions to the refinery. And of course, um, since then, there was new ownership. Um, then 2013, they ended air quality measurements, the EPA alleges, and uh, with the new management, they restarted the um, two crude refinery units beginning in 2018, and they finally got it up and running in September 2020, providing 4,000 construction jobs to the local area. There have been a few incidents. On February 4th, there was an oily mist discharge to the local area, and uh, Lime Tree has paid for the cleanup of 148 roofs, 245 cars, and uh, 65 of nearly 200 cisterns, which they're currently working on. Uh, they, uh, they do say there were some hydrogen sulfide odors during an April restart. This facility was built in 1970, and it is facing probably a lot of upgrade costs. As, by the grace of God, good leadership and rising vaccination rates, the pandemic comes to an end, people are getting back out. And unfortunately, we're having the same issues we had before the pandemic. Last Saturday, the National Park Service issued a press release concerning a missing 19-year-old swimmer near Lowell, Wyoming, uh, uh, specifically at the Berry's Landing parking area. On June 18th, the individual was reported missing. The Carbon County Sheriff, the Bighorn County Sheriff, the Bighorn County Search and Rescue, the and the Billings, Montana, U.S. Water Rescue Dive Team responded. Acting Superintendent Raymond McPadden made the following statement. Quote, our NPS team is working around the clock with our partners to locate the missing swimmer. Our thoughts and prayers go to the family and friends of our missing swimmer. When you're in national parks, you need to be very careful. Nature has a very dark, mean side. And um, in another press release last Friday from the Grand Teton National Park, um, the Park Service requested that anyone who has seen Kean McLaughlin, please let them know. This is the uh, poster. Mr. McLaughlin is a 27-year-old, missing since Tuesday, June 8th. Uh, the Park Service in the past six days have uh, deployed 70 park staff with canine teams for uh, searches. 45 helicopter searches have occurred. Um, they've interviewed 140 people to glean tips and other information. The Civil Air Patrol have been using forward-looking infrared devices to search for him. This is the stuff that they hunt tanks with. Um, they're also using something called Reco Tech. This is a, uh, a technology that they can use to, it's an avalanche rescue technology introduced in 1983 in Europe. 